Hello and welcome. My name is Margie Estville, and I will be the host for this TLC session. We're excited that you have joined us to hear this session titled, Reaching Students in the 21st Century and Beyond. Please welcome Erica Steinberg. Thank you, Marjorie, so much. I appreciate that. And hello, everybody. I'm very excited to be here to present on live chat. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, um, I am one of three full-time live chatters for Asher University. Um, I'm based in Denver, and then our other two are based in Iowa and in our San Diego offices. Thank you. All right, so what is live chat? Our mission is to provide expert, efficient, and convenient advisement on, unique, on a unique platform. We strive to improve the student's experience and university's character and the university's effectiveness. We offer students a real-time solution for those who cannot call or wait for email replies. We own that contact and assure resolution by us or the appropriate personnel. There are also other departments that utilize live chat. That includes enrollment, financial aid, records management, student records, and CEDL, which is for instructors. So what is it that we do? There are no exceptions to the advisement that we provide. The only difference is the modality in which we provide it. Via live chat, we are able to submit course drops, submit withdrawal requests, set up academic leaves, set up evaluation requests, provide information on appeal processes, provide advisement and support, and basically anything that other advisors can do over the phone or email, we do via chat. We are even able to assist students who are in enrolled status with getting access to their student portals. Uh, after every chat, just like uh, all of our phone calls, the transcripts of our chats are documented in Campus View. And much like the skill activities that uh, the other advisors set up, if we're able to resolve it, then we would just set a regular live chat activity pending to the owning advisor. If it does require a follow-up, we set that up for them as well. We also receive Facebook messages through our IV system, and those Facebook messages can either be a direct Facebook message or they can be messages that are posted on our Facebook wall and we receive those via Sprinkler. And Sprinkler, similar to Ivy, is a social media platform that encompasses both Facebook and Twitter. So the screen that you see right now shows you the student view. Um, students have two options uh, as to how they can reach us via chat. Um, on your left, you can see the version that they would see if they went on the main ashford.edu website and as to how they can reach us, or there is a link within the student portal for them to reach us there as well. So once the student clicks to chat with us, uh, the screen that you see to the right is the IV system and uh, the chat comes in to us and that's how we speak with our students. So students use uh, live chat for definitely a variety of reasons. Um, as I mentioned before, ease, there's two locations to access it from, also the accessibility and the efficiency. And while all students utilize chat, we normally see a higher volume of students from our military and corporate uh, communities. We believe that this is mainly for the convenience and obviously for military students, if they're overseas, getting in touch with an advisor in real time can be difficult. In the last six months, these two types of students have made up 30 to 40% of the chats that we receive. Uh, in this next section, I'm going to provide some insight into how and why chat has surfaced in the last decade or so. While the majority of studies that have been done in the last 15 years have been focused on library and reference services, their success shows that chat services in general are successful and on the uprise. The McGill University study looked at live chat reference usage over the course of the 2014-2015 school year. From that, they concluded that expectations for the services are high, well-received, and regularly used. Similarly, the 15-year study, which looked at multiple schools and community-based library services conducted from 1995 to 2010, concluded that 72% of users were more willing to use live chat services over face-to-face -face or phone. Also, when they broke down the data by age, uh, they found that people from the Generation X um, subsect, which is people born between 1965 and 1979, preferred chat the most. 
This indicates that a younger population will continue to utilize these services, which is what we are beginning to see more and more of in terms of the students entering the university. So based on that data, uh, chat definitely is important for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of them happens to be that while they've been in use for a number of years uh, with Ashford University, in the last 18 months, uh, there has definitely been gr much greater ex um, uh, expansion happening. This is due to the increased need, which we see from the military and corporate students, um, and why, we, why we've now created the three full-time positions. Um, our survey results that I'll talk about in a moment also show how, how efficient and impactful we are, not only to our department, but also with the communities that, that we service. Um, and in an ever-increasing place, we're in a need to meet students where they are. This means providing them with multiple avenues in which that they can receive report. So this chart shows our survey score results. After every chat, student has an opportunity to rate the service and information they are provided, along with provide any feedback about said service. Month over month, our scores remain fairly consistent with a high level of satisfaction. As advisors, this feedback is valuable to not only provide us insight into our students, but also to implement change. For instance, you can see in September of 2017, we noticed that our very poor score had risen over the previous months. Using the feedback the students provided, we learned that the reason for these scores was due to the impact of closing the chat too soon. And students were feeling that they didn't have an opportunity to take note of the information that we provided them. We were then able to implement a solution of keeping the chats open for longer and also advising the student directly that they could close out the chat when they were ready. So from that, we were able to then see an increase, or I should say a decrease, um, in our very poor score uh, the next month. Um, and while that was, you know, difficult to maybe deal with, seeing those very good scores, um, you know, are definitely very impactful to us. And some of the feedback that we were provided from those, um, some of the comments were that we provided very, we were very fast and helpful. Um, a student indicated that they received help right away and didn't have to wait at all and that we were very prompt and showed great compassion. So as I previously mentioned, uh, there are currently three time um, live chat advisors and we provide service to all of our students, undergraduate, grad, and now our doctoral students. And we also assist uh, with answering um, ask, ask for questions where students can send an email uh, to our librarians and they forward those to us as well as our Facebook messages that we receive via Sprinkler. While the future is ever evolving, some ideas that have been brought up are having a specific live chat advisor per each community, and even the possibility of having advisors on live chat that also have small populations of students. Ultimately, because of the way that we are heading as a society, there could potentially be endless possibilities regarding how live chat can be utilized, not only for the student, but for as the university as a whole. One recent implementation of that that we've seen is texting students who will then receive a link which will take them directly to live chat and that is going into effect uh, at the beginning of December. So I appreciate you taking the time out to listen and I'm happy to um, take any questions that anybody may have now. get back to that. All right. Uh, the faculty support staff also has a live chat line, but we can't get instructions to use it. Any ideas? Instructors. Instructors. Oh, can't get instructors to use it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you mean in terms of um, if they need assistance getting them to use it? Right. Yeah, we've had it for a while. Okay, and yeah. Um, there were a few people and then it broke down for a while and the few people went away and I think short of doing a survey which we try not to um, harass instructors with endless surveys on a number of things just wondered if you had any ideas or anybody in the room here for um, why we why instructors might not be using live chat 
I mean, I would argue that, you know, maybe part of it is that they're just not aware. Um, I think that's a, that's a very common um, thing that we've come up against in the last few months, especially, is that um, other advisors or other departments who maybe don't have as much access to it are simply not aware. Um, I know, especially for um, records management and student records, those two chat lines have also just been recently implemented. So I think a lot of people just aren't aware that, you know, it is an option. Um, you know, the, the instructor chat line, the SEAL chat line is something that we, even as the live chat advisors, don't have a lot of access or, or information to. Um, so I think, you know, maybe just providing that information um, you know, or providing the link, wherever that may be, I can certainly reach out and, and find that, um, you know, might increase the usage. Yeah, so we've, we've got it in our signature, but I mm -hmm. think that we need to just uh, do a campaign and uh, try to bring that up front and center. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, we, we've done that with the regular live chat as well, where we've, um, you know, made it more apparent. Um, I have definitely taken efforts and strides to work with the advisors here, you know, to let their students know, you know, if I'm not available, you can't reach me, and you can actually go online and, and talk to another advisor, sort of similar to how the communities work. Um, and communities, for those that aren't aware, are... Um, we're broken down now essentially into our colleges. So every team services one specific college. Um, and I've, you know, in that vein, I've taken um, strides and steps to make it make, you know, all of the advisors aware that what we do on chat is exactly the same thing that they do on the phone. So we can definitely, you know, help out any of their students at any point in time, um, you know, and so trying to kind of drum it up, I think by word of mouth, you know, is, has, has definitely been helpful in that regard. Yeah, it looks like Benita said that uh, some people like the email provides a trail mm -hmm. of having asked and receiving the answer, and that's a pretty valid reason. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I don't know how for students, um, yes, live chat definitely provides instant results for students. Um, I would hope that it does provide instant results for, for instructors as well. Um, not having access to see those checks, I'm, you know, it's not something that I'm sure of. Um, yeah. I know that we, you know, we take a, a document, um, a screenshot, we copy and paste the entire conversation that we have into an activity. Um, I don't know if, you know, doing that and emailing it is like an extra step. You, you know, know <laughs> we have, we have that capability, and uh, I guess we should just do that. Uh, just go ahead yeah. and email it to them, even though maybe they didn't ask, but uh, just, yeah, just, just an, act on that. An, yeah, another way to, you know, get them that information or make sure that they have that, that sort of paper trail that you get, you know, yeah. when you have emails. And they'll often ask um, very specific questions, and we mm -hmm. can look up right at that time that they're calling mm -hmm. uh, the answer to their question. And so it's a really great thing uh, for a person who uses it. There's yeah. Benita. Hi, I just wanted to say, yeah, I think sometimes our instructors, the reason why we are finding that they don't use it is because it's a timing issue with them. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're swamped. They're, yeah. you know, they have so much going on and an email is like a lagged time that mm -hmm. they need, <laughs> yeah. you know, let me write my question out. Let me see what's going on. And then I'll come back a little bit later on and see what that result is. Mm -hmm. So that's just my opinion from working with faculty. on a yeah. regular. No, I, I, and I think that that's, that's completely valid. Um, you know, I, I would say the CETL aspect, the instructor aspect of live chat is one thing that um, as the full, as one of the full-time live chatters, we just don't have access to. Um, but I, I mean, I think that there's a lot of potential there for it, you know, if, if instructors yeah. would utilize it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I think it's sort of like a catch-22, it kind of sounds like, you know, it's instructors aren't utilizing it because they feel a certain way about it. Right. Because they feel a certain way about it, there, you know, there's no increased yeah. access to it, so. Trying to find that balance, you know. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. Um, and, I, you know, that's something I would, you know, certainly be happy to assist on, like, you know, if, if working with, if they have, if instructors have questions or, 
have concerns about the live chat aspect of it. Um, you know, I would definitely encourage- Or even us, even us faculty support people if we have yeah. questions. Yeah, you know, definitely. <laughs> I'm happy if you, want to email, if you want to email me, you know, I'm definitely not, I wouldn't say the expert in, in that arena, but I, you know, I'm super gung-ho about looking into it um, and working with our administrators so that we can, you know, make it really- I think as robust, I think as, as live chat could potentially be. Yeah, it would be interesting for us to collaborate together just to pull our data pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it that we're hearing on our side from our faculty? And then what are you guys' experiences in terms of what you're hearing from your students? So yeah, you know, I would I would definitely be interested to see the data on that. Um, I actually yeah. run a monthly report, which is uh, one of the slide in one of the um, graphs that I showed to show what our monthly usage is um, and I do I run a, an additional report to break it down by community um, yeah. so that we can see you know what kind of usage we're getting yeah and, and so Margie I'm, is our is our data person so that's okay. a good thing. <laughs> oh, great yeah I would love to to potentially collaborate on that and see you know where the usage is happening or not happening yeah. and, and how yeah. it increase Sounds good. Well, yeah. thank you, Erica. Thank you so much for your presentation. My pleasure. Thank you so much for the questions. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> <Good> feedback. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, take care. Thank you. And thank you so much, Erica, and for all of you for joining in the session today. And there's still some TLC. So see you there. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.